Good evening, everyone. Welcome. It is the 14th of December, um, 9 p.m. Singapore time, and we are talking about um, brain and memory challenges. So this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, many of you know that um, I do have an elderly mother who does celebrate. Um, she um, is the. She has some brain challenges. And so we wanna make sure that we're honoring everybody who we know who has brain challenges and also maybe offering them some tips. If you are the caretaker of someone who has brain challenges, my heart goes out to you. It can be extremely difficult, especially if you are their primary caretaker. Um, many of you may know that my mother lived with me for five years from the age of 85 to 90. And then um, earlier this year, we had some um, other health challenges with her, um, non-COVID, but still uh, serious enough that she was, um, she wound up uh, in a ho in hospital. And then afterwards, it made more sense for her to be cared for in a facility where um, there was just 24 hour care, something that we, um, because we sleep at night, we weren't able to provide. So she's in a beautiful place that she really likes. And she's actually making friends there. For those of you who don't know, my mother is super social. Um, I Now you know where I get it from. And um, she just, she's very happy there, which is, which is a good thing. Because of COVID, there are some challenges being able to visit her, as I'm sure you all know. But um, if you uh, have a loved one who is in a, any sort of a facility or someone's that brought to hospital, been brought to hospital during this, um, during COVID, um, during these last eight, nine months, you know what I'm talking about, that the challenges are actually very great and that um, loneliness can actually be a big, um, a big factor in trying to um, manage brain challenges because sometimes people who do have brain challenges, it's brought on by different things. And we're going to talk about that in a little while. So um, for those of you who are, are or have ever cared for an elderly relative, just tell me in the chat because I just want to get a sense of how many people are we talking about? Are there a lot of people in this group who have cared for or are caring for an elderly relative? And just let me know. So today, as I said, memory and brain challenges. Um, the reason why the face is being erased on the younger person is that the older person um, is looking at that face and sometimes thinking, who is that person? Um, my uh, Nina says, my father-in-law. Anyone else who wants to share um, a family member who they're caring for or um, that they have cared for in the past? You, you know that, that these challenges can be very great. Okay, so let's talk about, first of all, what exactly are we talking about? So when we talk about the more dementia is bandied about quite a bit. What exactly does that mean? It's a general term for memory loss and other cognitive abilities serious enough to interfere with daily life. So I'm not talking about someone who forgets their keys or goes into the uh, parking garage and says, wait, where's my car? Those are kind of everyday lapses of memory that everyone experiences. We're talking about things that really interfere with our daily life. Um, they may have other issues that affect the central nervous system and that's why it's classified the whole um, um, uh, group of ailments is classified as dementia, but there are other more specific things and I'm gonna talk about them a little bit, not in, in depth and many, um, Many of you may have heard these terms before, but I think it's important to kind of differentiate between the different terms. Now, everything that I'm talking about today and all the suggestions that I have can help your memory. So even if you are just having sort of temporary memory issues, maybe it's because of concern or anxiety, you can absolutely use these products to strengthen your brain, to help you to feel more cognitively sound. But um, we're really talking about people who have long-term, maybe chronic issues that are not easily solvable, but that the things that we have used and um, continue to use on our family and friends are the, the, the tips, if you will, the tips and tricks that have kind of helped us to bridge that gap. So one of the things that um, is very common is actually vascular de dementia, um, which is what I think we believe my mother um, has suffered for. Vacu vascular dementia is actually the second most common type of dementia, and it's caused by damage to the vessels that supply blood to the brain. 
Um, blood vessel problems can cause strokes, of course, or damage the brain in other ways, such as damaging the fibers and the white matter of the brain. The most common symptoms of vascular dementia include uh, difficulties with problem solving, slow thinking, focus, and organization. These can be more, actually more noticeable than memory loss, but over time, both of them kind of um, converge, if you will. Also Huntington's disease, if you know someone who has suffered from that, this is caused by a genetic mutation. Um, traumatic brain injury. So you've heard on the news, um, people who have um, perhaps been in sports um, uh, have uh, experienced repetitive head trauma, repetitive head trauma. Traumatic brain injury is very often um, shortened to the acronym TBI. Um, people such as boxers, football players, um, maybe uh, even soccer players sometimes when they head off the ball, soldiers can often uh, experience TBI. And depending on the, type, the part of the brain that's injured, it can cause different sorts of dementia signs, symptoms such as depression, maybe even explosiveness, meaning that they're just out of control with their emotions and that anger is is very frequently one of these um, uh, one of the symptoms um, memory loss of course and impaired speech it can also cause something that's uh, a tremor that's akin to Parkinson and Parkinson's is actually called Parkinsonism and symptoms might not appear until much later until years after the tra head trauma so those of you who have um, maybe young people that are um, um, experiencing some of these uh, um, uh, more severe brain or or concussions, what we'd call in, in in the U.S. we call them concussions when someone falls or hits their head and then is basically not supposed to do any sort of sports for a while. They may feel dizzy. I actually have um, many of you. Uh, I actually don't know if you know this. Um, I have a niece who's in her late twenties and she um, was in a car accident and suffered some head trauma. And that has been a con continuing um, distress for her. And so we wanna make sure that, especially with our young people, are we mindful of what types of head traumas they're experiencing and how are we helping them? Um, another one, of course, is uh, Kreutzfeldt-Jakob disease. This is a rare brain disorder. I'm mentioning it because sometimes it comes up in the news. And then finally, Parkinson's disease, which many of you are familiar with. My dear friend, James, who I've talked about here many times, um, uh, is um, was diagnosed many years ago with Parkinson's disease and continues to manage, he and his wife continue to manage the disease for him. So um, many different reasons why we can lose our memory. Dementia is kind of the big umbrella or people tend to label something as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's where they may not have fully a diagnosis. Um, uh, I'm actually seeing in the chat a lot of comments and I just wanna go through a couple of them. Um, uh, uh, Nina is saying um, father-in-law is, as I mentioned before, Joyce is saying primary caretaker. She's an only child of her mom. Nina also saying tonight is a very interesting topic for you and your family. Yeah, me too. And it's interesting. I've gone, I've kind of swung the whole pendulum. I am, when my mother was uh, originally diagnosed, if you will, it was very emotionally traumatic. I didn't know what the trajectory was going to be. And now um, some about six, seven years in, we're beginning to see what what are some of the um, what are some of the the outcomes, if you will. And what's interesting is, and somebody here mentions uh, Nina says that um, I think it's Nina who says she's an only child. I'm also, as you know, I'm sorry, it's Joyce who says she's an only child. Who do you ask advice? From who do you? From whom do you ask advice? Is it your spouse? Is it your siblings? If you're an only, maybe it's your children. It really is very tricky. The burden of deciding what is this person's care, and the person's care really falls completely on your shoulders. So they are they become very much like children again, and then you have to you have to manage that care. Um, Lynette says Lynette says my old, oldest brother, 66, um, starting to show some signs. Farah says, trouble remembering things from elementary school. Doctor said, I'm just not focusing. Yeah, Farah, don't worry. There are certain things that honestly, we all forget things from time to time. I know um, my kids were talking about something and I was thinking, really, when did we do that? But then little by little, it started to come back to me. 
we are all we're all under a lot of stress and pressure. I think actually now during COVID, because we're not doing as much, we're able to settle down in certain ways. But certain people still are extremely anxious, and we want to make sure that we're helping them because anxiety in general is not a good um, precursor. Karina says, "Whoops, have I? Um, I don't know if I've." muted everybody. I think that I have. Uh, Karina says, mom is 91 on the 31st of December. Congratulations, Karina. Um, sometimes she remembers things, but sometimes she forgets. The hardest thing is I have to act as her parents. Yeah, I remember. It, it's it's difficult. It really is. And then finally, again, Nina says, one of the COVID symptoms is delirium. It's also a decrease of brain function. Wondering what we should take for this. Well, Nina, by the end of this, you're absolutely going to know what you're going to have to take for this. And I'm going to keep going here with our presentation. So Alzheimer's is kind of the most common form of dementia. And when we think of dementia, this is the thing that we hear about over and over again. Um, it counts for 50 to 80% of all dementia cases, but not all, as I mentioned. So we want to be mindful when, especially when we're uh, talking about someone who does have memory loss, that we have a firm diagnosis. We don't want to be diagnosing anybody. We, For the most part, I think the um, we are not doctors or nurses on this um, call. I have some wonderful friends and colleagues that are nurses, and they've helped me so much with my mom. And so I'm extremely grateful for this. So when we're talking about memory loss, we can be talking about cognitive changes, um, memory loss that's noticed by someone else, usually a spouse or a family member, difficulty communicating or finding words, difficulty with visual and spatial abilities. They may not be able to draw the same things. One of the earliest tests that's given for people with memory loss is to draw a clock face. Yes, to draw a clock face, which seems very basic, but um, actually is fairly difficult for people that have um, um, memory, severe memory difficulties. Um, they may get lost while driving, um, reasoning or difficulty with pro reasoning or problem solving, difficulty handling, com com handling complex tasks, excuse me, difficulty with planning or organizing, with coordination and motor functions, and finally confusion or disorientation. So all of these can be different and your loved one or your friend may have someone may have some of these symptoms or may have all of them. My mother is extremely verbal and continues to be very verbal, but there are certain things that are just ex excessively difficult for her at this point and um, other people become nonverbal. So it's, it's kind of a trajectory. You never know what your, um, what your loved one is going to experience. So what are some of the risk factors? So let's talk about risk factors, first of all, that we cannot change, okay? So these are really important because I know some of you may be thinking, oh, well, I wanna change this or the other thing. There are actually only three that we cannot change and these are important. Um, number one is your age, right? You can't change your age and actually your risk factor, your risk does rise as you age, um, especially over the age of 65. However, dementia isn't a normal part of aging and dementia can occur in younger people. So your age, yes, your risk increases as your age, just as your risk for many other diseases increases with age, but it is not a kind of check the box. I'm old and I'm going to get dementia. No, there are many things that you can do to actually help your brain to stay current. Um, number two, these are the things we cannot change. Family history. Having a family history of dementia puts you at greater risk of developing the condition. However, many people with a family history never develop symptoms and many people without a family history do. There are tests to determine whether you have certain genetic mutations. So um, super important if you're thinking, oh, well, my in my case, my mother has is struggling with this. Is it necessarily um, sort of check the box? Elena will fall into that category. Not necessarily. And I'm going to talk to you about um, 12 factors that we can change and we can monitor to keep our brains healthy. And number three, that we cannot change. These are the three that we cannot change. Down syndrome. By middle age, many people with Down syndrome develop early onset Alzheimer's. So if you have someone in your family who has Alzheimer's, who has, excuse me, Down syndrome, um, you may, um, this may be some another um, eventuality that you that you have to address with that person. So really only three risk factors. And for the majority of us, 
age and family history are the two main ones that we just, you can't change it, I'm sorry. But let's look at the 12 risk factors that you can change. Number one on the hit parade is physical activity. We wanna make sure that you're getting out there, that you're seeing people, that you're walking on a regular basis. I contribute some of the difficulties that my mother has now to um, a period of time where she was actually um, mourning the loss of some relatives that had died in quick succession. It was very difficult for her, including her own mother and then a beloved aunt. Um, and she began to just kind of cocoon and to stay indoors and not wanna do things. I think that might've been kind of the first step in um, her losing connections with other people. I think that's very important. So physical activity, super important. Number two is smoking or juuling. If you are smoking or juuling, please, my friends, please stop. Um, I am seeing, especially with my uh, kids friends a lot of them i shouldn't say a lot but several of them are jewelers they're not smokers most kids aren't um, cigarette smokers anymore but they are at a higher risk factor for many other things Met right now the biggest is covid and if they're exposed to covid it's very difficult for them to overcome it whereas the kids that i know who don't smoke or are not jeweling are actually doing much better so college students if you know a college student, if you are a college student, please stop jeweling, just give it up. It's such a bad habit. It really is, maybe you're thinking right now, oh, it looks cool or it helps to relax me. It's really not. There's so many other ways that you can do it. It's also a factor for dementia. So maybe not now, but maybe later on. And I know that's sometimes hard to see if you're young, but if you're um, of a mature age, I would say 35 or older, and you are actively jeweling, um, please consider dropping it because it is a habit that it really is not going to, to lead it. To, it's going to affect your brain. Okay, number three, excessive alcohol consumption. Now, small amounts of alcohol are actually shown in, in long-term studies to help things like cardiovascular health. So if you are a person who likes to have a glass of red wine from time to time or um, enjoys a cocktail once in a while, these are not, that's not the type of alcohol consumption that we're talking about, or even someone who puts a little bit of alcohol into some sort of a dish. We're talking about excessive alcohol consumption. So multiple drinks every day or almost every day um, can actually cause um, dementia-like effects and then eventually lead us into some of those more difficult brain um, um, Brain challenges. Okay, next, air pollution. So this is a tricky one. We can't always move, but what can we do? We can use diffusers. We can also filter our air. We can make sure that when we're standing outside, we're not standing right behind cars that are belching um, uh, all sorts of pollution every single day. So make sure that you are just being mindful of your pollution exposure and keep, keep it to a minimum if you possibly can. Number five, and I know this kind of goes in a funny snaky way, number five, head injury. We talked about this before. Um, uh, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I was an athlete in uh, high school and I had several concussions. Uh, I want to say three or four at least. And while I don't feel anything now, and most of them were mild, I am mindful sometimes, and certainly with my children who are both athletes, how is their brain health? And thankfully, even though they're they're still either do, doing sports or coaching now in college at the college level, they have maintained relatively free from injury. Other sorts of in injuries, sprained ankles and things like that and twisted fingers, but no, um, no head injuries, thank goodness. So you wanna really be mindful, especially if you have a young person in your house be my, watch those head injuries. Number six, infrequent social contact. So if you're on this call, I'm going to assume that you are somehow connected with doTERRA or if you're listening to this maybe on Facebook, I'm hoping that this will really help you to get out and to talk to people because that's really an important thing that we need to do. It's a little bit more difficult right now. It's a little tricky but we want to make sure that we're getting out and we're talking to people and we're continuing to maintain those social contacts. T contacts. One of the things that I love about doTERRA is it's like built-in friends. You always have somewhere to go. You always have someone to call. Hey, do you want to go get a cup of coffee? There's always someone around to talk to. And I think that's super important because other people keep you on your toes. They ask you questions. Maybe they, they challenge you in ways that 
just, I don't know, walking in and out of your apartment complex and saying hello to the, the doorman would not really challenge you, you know, to say good morning to him, you know, to pick up your mail, but do you really know what, what is that person going to say to you? And that's what social interaction is all about. S number seven, less education. And this is kind of a tricky one. Want to make sure that our children are getting, um, are being educated to the fullest, to their fullest abilities. Want to make sure that we're challenging them mentally. Um, interestingly enough, my mother is a very well-educated lady. So this actually does, she has her master's degree, um, doesn't apply to her, but uh, I guess studies are showing that um, people with less education can actually um, exhibit signs of, um, uh, this is a risk factor. Number eight, obesity. Now this is a really tricky one and I'm not exactly how sure how it works, but as we know, obesity is a risk factor for many other things, including all different sorts of heart diseases and cancer. So if you are not managing your weight or it's get running away with you during COVID, try to get your weight back under control because this is another risk factor for you. I know that during this time, we're staying at home all the time. Maybe we're not exercising as much as we want. I'm living where I'm living, it's getting colder, so I'm not getting out as much, but I'm trying to get to the gym. My daughter is dragging me, which is great. It's great to have a young person in the house who's super fit and wants to go to the gym all the time. She's like, mom, mom, come on, let's go. So. Um, just got to get out there and do it. Even if it's just walking back and forth, get your exercise in and keep your weight down. Um, number nine, and this is a big one because I think many people suffer from hypertension or they, they suffer from the, the triple whammy, which is high blood pressure, um, high cholesterol and diabetes. And those are actually numbers nine and 10. So that triple whack, the triple whammy, yeah, those are risk factors for dementia as well. So keep your heart health, be mindful of your heart health. If you do suffer from any of those conditions, make sure that you're getting to a doctor on a regular basis. Monitor your blood pressure. Go to your local druggist or your local, or even get yourself a monitor that you can use in your house. Really important. You want to maintain the, those risk factors as low as possible. Number 11 is depression. So this goes back to the story I was telling before about my mom and experiencing depression from the death of two loved ones in her family. And it really caused her to, to withdraw. So you can see there were a couple of things that happened. There was a, a, a precipitating event, a death, actually two deaths, right? Which caused a it's kind of that withdrawing from friends. So infrequent social contact, I think it kind of led to a depression, which led to physical inactivity, which led to a little bit of obesity. You know, it, it was kind of a snowball rolling downhill. We need to maintain our social interactions and also look at our hearts, right? Um, how are we feeling? Are we very anxious? Are we um, connecting with other people? Where there's no harm in talking to a professional. If you don't have friends or family, perhaps that can guide you through a difficult situation. Seek help, my friends. It really is important. Um, and then number 12, hearing impairment. Now, what I didn't realize when I first saw this was that why does, it seems crazy, why would hearing impairment be a risk factor for dementia? But the reason it's a risk factor is because our brains need to be stimulated. And if we cannot hear certain things, certain ranges, certain conversations, we begin to zone out. We go into our own world. So super important. And here's something that I'm going to mention to you. If you haven't had your ears cleaned lately, and I know this sounds like a crazy thing to say on a, on a Monday morning call or a Monday evening call, go get your ears cleaned, especially if you live in a big city. I have my ears candled regularly, which means I use, I don't do it myself. I have a very dear friend, a nurse who does it for me. Um, keep your ears cleaned. You wanna be able to hear things. If you don't have someone who can do candling for you, go find a doctor. Usually it's an ENT and have your ears professionally clean. I know that sounds crazy. Do not, do not grab a, a Q-tip or a, a, a cotton swab when you get off this call and start digging around there thinking you're going to clean your ears. No, no, no. But if you're over the age of about 35 and you've never had your ears professionally cleaned, I'm going to recommend that you do it. You'll be shocked at what happens. Let me say no more. It is not, it's crazy. Okay, 
Let me give you a couple of recommendations. If you're um, uh, challenged with some, with you yourself are seeing memory losses or memory challenges, even if it's not a specific diagnosis, maybe during this time of crisis, you're beginning to feel more tense. Maybe you're seeing yourself slipping into some of these risk factors because you're alone more than you were before. We've got some recommendations for you. Don't panic. That's the number one thing. Just don't panic. Everybody stay calm. Number one is what can you apply? So I like to apply frankincense, Melissa, and Intune. So Intune, I'm applying actually on my temples or maybe on the base of my neck. Frankincense, I'm taking under my tongue every morning. And Melissa, I'm applying either on the crown of my head or maybe at the base of my neck. Melissa, it's true. And frankincense are super expensive. But right now, as we know, we all have a... Um, we have a frankincense special. So if you are purchasing 200 PV or more, really everywhere that's go that's reaching this call, you're gonna be able to receive a free frankincense. So make good use of it, take it every day. Don't just put it in a cabinet and not use it. These are the oils that you want to keep your brain feeling great. Okay, next thing we wanna try, we wanna take internal, you wanna take our, um, uh, daily nutrient pack, whether you're taking the three, your um, LLV, or you're taking just two, your Microplex VMZ and your XE Omega, make sure you're taking a supplement on a regular basis. Nutrition is important for all parts of your body, including your mind, your emotions, super important. The other thing that I'm taking on a daily basis is DDR Prime. Now, you can, as you can see, I'm showing the bottle of DDR Prime. You can put it in a capsule if you wish. You can apply it to the back of your neck. You can put it on the soles of your feet. I'm sorry, I don't love the smell of DDR Prime. I know some people love it. And for a while I was putting on the soles of my feet and then putting socks on. In the morning I would wake up and and literally I'd almost fall out of bed because the smell was so bad. I'm sorry. I know there's some of you who love it, um, but I take the capsules. So if I didn't have pre-made capsules, I would putting, be putting one to four drops in a capsule every day. I buy the pre-made capsules easier for me. Also, I can't smell it. And I take um, two every day. I actually take one in the morning, one in the evening. I think it's really helping me. It's helping me with my immune system. And now see, it can also help you with your brain health. Um, you wanna make sure you're getting nutritional support. The other thing you wanna try is diffusing, right? So again, use your frankincense, blend it with your adaptive. So we know the whole adaptive line is wonder wonderful for um, managing emotions, helping us to feel on a steady state. I would actually add in your, um, I would use your adaptive on your, um, on a daily basis, rolling it on. If you were feeling a lot of stress, I would take your capsules. I would maybe take your DD, DDR Prime and your adaptive capsules either together or apart. Uh, adaptive you can take whenever during the day. It's interesting. Now that I'm talking about the brain, I'm actually getting a little bit of a headache. I'm gonna talk, and I'm not a headachey person, but I'm gonna take a sip of water here. Better, okay. Um, this can actually, um, just promote relaxation during the day. It's not going to put you to sleep, but it is going to help you to kind of smooth out those bumps, especially if you're having a lot of stress during the day. We don't want to have those kind of wacky emotions that really put us into a lot of distress. And so I'm seeing in the chat, um, I don't know if everybody has gotten a frankincense yet, but I got mine. So I hope you got yours as well. Grace says she got hers. Lydia says, um, she doesn't like DDR either, but her friends can just take it directly. Yes. So let me know in the chat. Do you love the smell of DDR or not so much? So give me a yes or a no. So a Y, just a Y, excuse me, just a Y or an N. Benjamin says he loves it. Okay. So that smell, woo. I don't know. Um, I think I told you the story that when I went to Vietnam, uh, about a year, it must be about a year ago now, there were ladies who were, looked beautiful, by the way. I mean, absolutely beautiful skin. And they were putting it on their faces. Oh my gosh. I think for me, that would be torture because as I said before, I'm just really not my thing. Okay. So I'm seeing for everyone. Um, uh, Sihan says, yes. Dardanella says, not her favorite. Angie says, yes. Joan says, yes. Betty, yes. Simon says, acceptable. Um, Ooh, Vivian says, yax, no. Dornella says, I'm waiting for frankincense, DDR, okay. Um, Z says, she takes it internally every day. Yeah, 
I feel like it's really, it's one of those powerhouses. I rotate DDR Prime with other things, but I love my DDR Prime. And Mary says, um, yes, I got it and use frankincense as regular using a daily lemon drop. Okay, terrific. So let's keep going. We've got a couple of other things that I want to show you. The other thing is when we when we manage moods, and this is interesting because you may have someone, um, one of the things that uh, I experienced with my mother is um, she suffered from irritability. So she would get frustrated with something, either doing a task or talking to someone or a conversation that she had had that had been frustrating. Maybe she couldn't um, remember some of the details or the, we were trying to talk to her about something, especially in the early stages. And she wasn't able to follow us as well, perhaps as she could, or she would go to a doctor and the doctor would be trying to explain something and she would get very frustrated with that. Using calming oils, applying them to the temples, the soles of the feet while the person is sleeping. If you're the caretaker for an elderly person, or even you yourself are having a lot of irritability and stress, calming oils can also help so they can help the person who's suffering from the stress. They can also help the caregivers. So we, we all know what those calming oils can be. It can be anything from some of our roll-ons. You can use your peace roll-on. You can diffuse it. You could use your console, your forgive, your lavender peace. There's so many calming um, essential oils. My mother uh, loves um, in the U.S. is called Serenity. She used um, Serenity quite a bit every single night now that she's living in in uh, a different place not really sure how often she's using her oils but when she was living here she had her little case and she used them on a daily basis and i continue to drop off essential oils for her but I, i'm not allowed to go into her room so i really don't know what she's using but keep praying folks right we always keep praying um, Lydia says she loves Copaí, but absolutely wonderful for relaxation and um, can be used, I feel, sometimes with or interchangeably with frankincense to kind of give that body, give your body a boost. Um, success of essential oils, well, let's talk a little bit about that, specifically with um, brain challenges. In the Journal of uh, Advanced Nursing, as part of a trial, lavender dream and mandarin, so let's call it lemon or a, um, you could use one of the mandarins that you already have. Have. Essential oils were applied to the skin of 39 patients over um, a period of time, and this resulted in increased alertness, contentment, and sleeping at night, and reduced levels of agitation, withdrawal, and wandering. Um, wandering is another big challenge, and which is why many people wind up in um, professional settings, because it's very uh, challenging to um, maintain uh, a, uh, a regular schedule if you have someone who's wandering during the day and you're extremely nervous about them or you're worried that they might wander. So this is, this is uh, um, a, a good thing, a good thing to know about. Okay. Um, we heard already about the link to depression and anxiety. So um, we want to make sure that especially now where some people are extremely anxious, it's interesting. I think that I've gone through several different stages now in COVID. My first stage when I found out about COVID was, it's going to be fine. Keep going, everybody work harder because that's my personality, right? Um, after a while, you kind of give in to the feeling of, oh my goodness, no amount of working harder is going to necessarily make this go away. Um, you want to uh, uh, step up in leadership for your team always, especially I'm talking to my leaders out there. And I see that all of you have done a beautiful job in stepping up in friendship and in, in camaraderie and in um, just being a joy to your teams. I'm so incredibly proud to see that of all of our leaders. And, um, but then what happens? Maybe we step back and we say, how is this actually going to work? And that can sometimes lead to depression and anxiety. At that point was really, I was going through a huge transition with my mother being in hospital and making the transition to a, a permanent living situation. It was very stressful here at home. And I felt myself, you know, really succumbing to some anxiety, which usually isn't my, isn't my, um, um, my normal state of being. I tend to be one of those people who's like either let's go or just more positive in general. But kind of getting through it, using a lot of essential oils, talking to friends, meeting with people, um, talking to professionals who could kind of lead me through the process with my mom. I'm super, super grateful for everyone who stepped in during those moments. Um, I feel like my mother's in the right place now. She's gone 
she's made a transition, our family has made a transition. And I think it's important that um, we always maintain that kind of even keel. We begin to look at ourselves. Okay, what's going on here? Am I less than optimum? And if it's a day or an hour, okay, great. But when we start seeing it day after day, week after week, we really have to be, be mindful. So being on a wellness program that supports a positive mood in general can help you and your loved one deal better with the challenges that both of you are facing because if you're a caretaker for a um, dementia patient, it can be extremely, extremely challenging. So um, let's talk about our cheat sheet, our 90-day plan, if it was me. So we always want to talk about our 90-day plan. So what I would be doing is in month one, I would be purchasing my um, LLV and my frankincense. Those are kind of be your one-two punch. You've got to maintain your physical health. And then also you need your frankincense for your brain health. And I want you to be taking your frankincense under your tongue, applying it to the back of your neck, maybe helping your loved one to do the same thing. If your loved one has difficulty swallowing, because some patients actually do have difficulty swallowing, um, you can easily pop these into some sort of a smoothie, or you can open them up and allow the powders, except for the XC Omega, which is not a powder, just to fall into the smoothie and blend them up. And I know many people who have done that successfully for their loved ones. In month two, I would keep up with the nutrition and then I would add your Intune. Remember, we're trying to keep them on a steady state. And um, the biggest thing I think is um, nutrition. The other thing that I saw in several studies was uh, intake of vitamin D. So if they're not getting out and they're not able to get any kind of sunshine, are they getting enough vitamin D? And we wanna hope that from the um, LLV, they are getting enough vitamin D, but if they're not, and that's been um, ascertained through your doctor through blood uh, workups, then absolutely supplementation of vitamin D is critical. And um, I don't know if you've heard this, but many people are saying that vitamin D, intake of vitamin D during COVID has actually been very good um, for maintaining general health. So I, I get my blood tested and so does my husband periodically. And my, I guess our kids do too. Thankfully, right now our vitamin D level is good, but there's been dips. It's interesting. It really, and I know in a Northern climate, we just don't get enough sunshine. We just don't. Okay. So, and then in month three, I keep on with our, um, with our uh, nutritional health. And then I would add in adaptive and Melissa. Now, if you're not an adaptive, uh, you feel like the essential oil would be not something that you would use on a regular basis, treat yourself to the roll on, or maybe you'd prefer the capsules. I feel like they work in conjunction with one another but either one of those will be fine. This is a, a fairly expensive month, month three. So you wanna make sure that maybe you're, you're, caught, you're managing your costs. But for a person who's on a regular um, um, uh, brain support program, the, these three months could be repeated again and again and again. So just make sure that you're, you're making sure that you as a caretaker or perhaps the person that you're taking care of are getting exactly what it is that they need. I think for the caretaker, I would add in forgive and console. Um, there's a tendency sometimes when you're taking care of a person who has a lot of health challenges, especially brain challenges, to either feel um, guilty or stressed, maybe angry. Um, there are, can be a lot of emotions and I wanna make sure that you, you're taking good care of yourself. And so please, if you are a caretaker for someone who is experiencing brain challenges, make sure you're taking care of yourself and watch for those risk factors because we wanna make sure that you don't wind up falling into some of them inadvertently. Um, we've got a couple of helpful resources here. Uh, Scientific American Mind, which was a great, um, uh, a great issue. There's two things. There's actually a whole issue about it, but there's a specific article called Remember When by, the, by Scientific American. That's, I have to say, I love that magazine and I try to read it online periodically, but it really does have some great information about the brain. And then in the New York Times a couple of years ago, could hearing loss and dementia be connected? And that's what I was talking about when I was talking about uh, my um, research into um, hearing loss. How, what's the connection there? We don't simulate the brain and then we begin to lose some of those connections. Okay, um, Dion says, uh, Melissa, so expensive. Yes, but it is expensive, but I have to say it's worth it. And you can always dilute it and make a roll on for yourself and then roll it on periodically. But I feel like it's one of those things you wanna have in your arsenal. Don't, don't 
shortchange yourself, maybe save up some points and try to buy yourself one with points. I think it's really, really worth it. Okay, last but not least, thank you to our presidential diamond team. Um, as always, you're the guys who, guys and gals who are on here week after week getting things done. And I'm so happy and grateful that you're all here with us um, every single week. The ideas expressed in this presentation are primarily from the book, Essential Oils Healthcare for Today. And it is on super special right now at aromatools.com. And there's going to be some of those books coming to you no matter where you are, because I know this is kind of a team effort. But if you're interested in even a single copy, go to aromatools.com. Um, thank you so much for having been on. If you are on the live, um, stay tuned because we're going to give away some prizes in about a minute. If you are not on the live, I want to encourage you to click the button below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are here twice a week, once on Mondays in English and on Wednesdays in Spanish, talking about um, essential oils and all the great things that they can do. This is a way for us to support each other and also to come up with some new and different ideas. The 90 day plans are a way for you to get healthy and stay healthy over a period of 90 days. And our book kind of supports that effort. So stay tuned for more tips and tricks. We're going to be talking about um, asthma next week. We talked about um, different breathing issues, but that's what we're going to be talking about next week right here. So um, have a wonderful week if you are, um, if you're listening to us on YouTube and stay tuned for more um, episodes really soon. Bye-bye now.